Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So today's deck is kind of a mashup of a couple of different ideas, and the first one being the She-Hulk and Infinite combo. If you use magic and then you skip on turn six, you can drop both She-Hulk and Infinite on the same turn, along with a one cost card to push a lot of surprising amounts of power onto the board. Now, this alone feels kind of gimmicky and you have to have a very specific set of cards to be able to make this work successfully. And so a couple of different versions of this kind of started surfacing with a few different game plans. And so this version is the one that I've had the most success with. I actually climbed from low 90s to infinite with it in a relatively short amount of time just because of the versatility it has. So instead of being all in on the She-Hulk and Infinite portion of the combo, this one runs a couple of different cards to try to give you a couple of different outs in case you don't draw into that particular play. And so there are a couple of clog factors in your hood and your green goblin. You want to run hood anyways because you're going to get the six power demon token to be able to use on turn seven along with a She-Hulk and an Infinite to kind of further extend that reach that you have. And using the Viper or the Carnage helps you clean it up. We have the Green Goblin that can help clog their board even further. So if you can identify a key location to drop that Green Goblin, sometimes you can cap out the opponent's lane and you can capitalize on the restricted space that they're going to have. This version also runs Shang-Chi. A lot of times these decks if the opponent runs like a Shuri combo and they just have like one or two really massive high powered plays, if you can Shang-Chi it, then you can take away a lot of their board presence. And so a lot of times you could do something like a, sh a double She-Hulk and a Shang-Chi on the last turn to swing a couple of lanes in your favor when the opponent might think that their 60 power Red Skull was enough to lock it down. But overall, the deck list has run phenomenally for me. Today's video is not running as consecutive of games as my other ones are going to. And the reason for that is while I was recording, the hot location was in effect, but this is not necessarily a hot location deck. It runs Green Goblin, which is great for the hot location, but this is primarily designed for just every game play. And so I wanted to get a couple of games that didn't showcase the Space Throne, that way it could be more relevant once the location finally goes away and this video goes live. And so with the brief deck explanation out of the way, we're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so first up we have Marco Darko. And the first location is the Baxter building. So we could get some decent value there. Um, we're going to start off with a hood. If we draw into our Viper, great. If not, our Carnage is a good kind of secondary way to clear that card. Uh, we do have Green Goblin as a way to either clog the Baxter building lane or right now the throne, the Space Throne is the featured location. So I want to make sure that we get a couple of games without it. But uh, Green Goblin's always fantastic. I, I just enjoy the Green Goblin card overall, especially with Silver Surfer's popularity dying down. Um, it really fits into that like clog and junk style deck archetype that I enjoy running. And so we're going to go ahead and try to lock down the middle location. We do hit it with the Green Goblin. They haven't played anything for the first three turns, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm curious what they're actually running. So we can't play any of our one cost cards in Hellfire Club, which could be a potential issue, at least not yet. We can either change this location or we can change this one with magic, depending on what we feel like we need to do. And so I think we play the Sunspot. We can go ahead and play Quinjet in middle, I think, and I think we'll be fine. Um, next turn, we can do the magic to extend the game. Ooh, so the yellow jacket. I'm curious if they're running some kind of Cerebro 3 or Valkyrie control list. If so, dropping initiative might come in pretty important here. Or allowing Sunspot to absorb some energy on that last turn could be also very important. So they drop a second card in the limbo lane. It could be a Professor X. Maybe they're going for a cheeky Professor X lockdown. Ooh, no, the Doc Ock. Uh, interesting. Not, not what I was thinking. And it missed... It hit everything except for our Moon Girl. Our Moon Girl is the only thing remaining in our hand. Uh, so we have a massive 35 power in Limbo. We don't have much power in the Space Throne, though, unfortunately. I'm going to go ahead and skip here. Maybe we hit uh, She-Hulk next. That's not great at all. Um, so that, oh, well, actually, no, that's fine. That takes away Limbo. Um, we skipped here, so we're going to absorb some extra energy. We're going to have more than two power in the Baxter building lane. I'm thinking they misplayed that and thought it was still going to go to that next turn. I mean, we'll take the cubes against the Galactus player. They probably should have won that one, but we're okay that they didn't. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have a Rebel Spy, and the first location is Hala. We do have our Quinjet and our Sunspot. Um... With it being Hala, I don't know that we can compete for it, and so I want to wait it out. 
Uh, because if we send them Green Goblin and then we end up losing, well, they clear the Green Goblin. And so I think we're going to wait one additional turn here. Okay, and so the middle location turns into the Nexus. And so that one could be pretty beneficial for us. Either to bait them into pushing a lot of power there and then we end up pulling the old switcheroo with the magic. We could do that. Um, or we could do... We could magic one of the other locations. We can skip, do the Infinite and the She-Hulk into that lane to make sure that we get plenty of power there. Um, we just have several options that we can go with. And so we do have the Infinite now. And so if we skip on five or six... Uh, that's going to be great for the Sunspot value and the Infinite value. Uh, they skip into this... Uh, they skip into turn three. So we will see. I think we're going to at least start acting like we are pushing plenty of power into the Nexus. And then maybe we switch it on them um, after they either overcommit or if we can tell that we have very heavily won that location. And so they send us a Green Goblin. I, I almost want to maybe... Maybe Carnage it? If we Carnage the location... We lose out on the value that Sunspot can bring, but we guarantee that they can't cap us out. And so this would be an eight power. Are we going to skip with more than eight energy throughout the rest of the game? I don't think we're going to. And so I, I would, I think we're going to carnage here. It feels almost wrong, but I think this is the play line. Um, the Sunspot would give us some additional energy, but uh, the Viper... Okay, so it was the right call. They were trying to fully cap out our location. And luckily we had initiative so that the carnage came down. We cleared ourselves a couple of spaces, uh, which is fantastic. So now the question becomes, do we skip and just do infinite on six? Or do we extend the game so that we can potentially get the She-Hulk as well? If we extend the game, we have a 50% chance of drawing into She-Hulk. That way we can have two powerhouse units to play into the Nexus on the last turn. Um, if we do magic, we can take away the chance that our Infinite pulls into the Grand Central location. And I think that's what we're going to go with. Um, hopefully they are doing something very similar. Hopefully they have. Hopefully they don't have debris or a Hobgoblin or something else to clog this middle location. Oh, and then we get the She-Hulk. The beautiful She-Hulk value. And so we're going to go ahead and skip here as well. If they change that far right lane, that might be a potential issue. They did skip on five, so maybe they have an Infinite as well. They could always go Infinite this turn and then She-Hulk on turn seven just naturally. And since they already have us outpowered, they would continue to have us outpowered in that scenario. So their deck is looking very, very eerily close to uh, the same kind of deck that we're running. Ooh, so they skipped as well. I mean, I, I think our only play is to push our power into the Nexus. Um, if they have us beaten by one, we have them beaten by one in Limbo but they would beat us in Hala. And so they would win the left in the middle location. We would we would beat them in the far right lane. I think they're going to win it, but we're going to let it play out. Uh, I think this one was a very good match. The Infinite, the She-Hulk, and then they actually have a one cost to use as well in the Nightcrawler. So very, very good. Um, almost mirror match-esque game. All right, next up we have Fuzzy. And we've actually played a few games. We only lost the one that we showcased. The rest we have been able to win. Um, the reason that we haven't showcased all of them is because Space Throne is showing up in, an, in a lot of games. It's a hot location right now, but this is not a hot location focused deck. And so I want to give a very clear picture of what the deck can do outside of that location. Um, maybe we have one or two games that do use the Space, th the space Throne, but for the majority, I want to showcase without that location because this deck is pretty phenomenal even without it. And so they do Ant-Man and Armor. I assume that they're going to completely cap out this location at least by next turn. I'm wondering if we want to do like a Green Goblin there this turn to try to surprise them and lock it down early. I don't know that we win this matchup, but at the same time, they can move cards over from here into New York. So I think I think we do want to clog it because then if they move their Green Goblin that breaks the Ant-Man bonus... Um, I'm okay with it. We can always potentially change the New York location with a magic if we draw into her by five. Um, and then they wouldn't be able to move those cards. So they snapped. I'm going to go ahead and play the Green Goblin. I don't think they cut cap it out this turn. I think they're going to try to cap it out on turn four. And so we do get that sneaky Green Goblin value. And they will still have that ability to move their Nightcrawler over. But I think the biggest piece of the work is done. We do draw into our magic. And so we're going to do Moon Girl. On turn five, we'll do magic. They won't be able to move cards out of kiln. We'll have the additional turn. We can skip on turn six. We'll have two She-Hulks to potentially play. 
And then if we draw into our Infinite or something better, then that's phenomenal. Ooh, so they play Dracula into Kiln. So not, uh, it could be a really big value or maybe it ends up not being phenomenal value for them. But we are going to make it where they can't move those cards. So whatever they have in their hand, it's going to have to be more than three that they pull into. And so let's go ahead and extend the game. I think this looks like a pretty standard like zoo deck. So something that wants to pull into an Infinite, pull into a Red Skull, into that Dracula to give the biggest burst of power. And so we don't have Sunspot on the board, unfortunately, but um, otherwise I think we're perfectly fine. We can skip. We have two She-Hulks to play. If we top deck Infinite here, beautiful. That is probably the best top deck that we could have gotten. We're going to want to skip here anyways. And so we're going to be able to throw 40 power onto the board on this last turn. The only thing that could have made this better would be if we had Sunspot on the board to absorb some of that extra, some of that extra energy that we were, we were rolling over. So they have three cards in hand. They throw the Cosmo down. So where do we split our power into? We could do 20 here, uh, 10 here, but do they throw something like a Red Skull? Do they just play their Red Skull? If they have a Red Skull and if they play it into either lane, then we lose as is. It really depends on where they end up playing it. Uh, Red Skull would push this lane to 20. It'd push this lane to 24. This would be 22. Uh, so it depends on if and where they play it. We're going to gamble it. We're going to play both of our She-Hulks into the left lane. If they play Red Skull here, that's unfortunate. They do get us at that point. But we're going to lock it in. Um, okay, the zero, great. And then the Red Skull in the middle lane, perfect. Um, I think that is still enough. We have the 20 power on the right. We win that one. We have the 23 power in middle. And they pull into a Lizard, so they only win that one by three. But they do win that location. And we are able to sneak away the win. Even with the Flood, even with the Kiln location, unfortunately locking us out of that lane to be able to compete for it, we were still able to push enough power we started at 97 with this list and we're almost infinite and i'm being selective with the games just because i want to showcase ones without space thrown but we are climbing very consistently all right next up we have hands on duck the first location is mojo world so we can always change that location eventually if we want to uh, we do have the carnage to destroy the hood if it looks like maybe we need to change that location because they're going to have more cards than we do there or they're just going to outpower us in general uh, we can change it with magic the middle location turns into Gamma Lab. We do have Shang-Chi in this list somewhere. Sometimes he gets that sneaky value. And I think that's what we're going to push for here is that sneaky value. If they have one or two cards that turn into a Hulk, then I think if we can sneak it away with the Shang-Chi and then maybe a demon, that's going to be the most ideal thing we can do. And so they do play armor. Right now, it looks like we're running a Death Wave deck. So we had the, we had the Hood, we had the Carnage, uh, but we are not running a Death Wave at all. We are going to lock in the Green Goblin in the far right lane. That should lock them out of that location. It's probably going to come as a surprise because it didn't look like we were running a junk deck up until that point. Um, so they play Colossus. They have the Hulk in the middle location. Um, and I think we're perfectly fine. I'm actually going to hold our demon here. Next turn, we can change one of these two locations with magic. On turn six, we'll skip into a She-Hulk and an Infinite, and we'll have one additional energy for the demon. Um, now, it's a lot better whenever we do have our Sunspot or Quinjet to get some additional value, uh, but I don't think by any means is it necessary. Um, and so we do not draw onto our Shang-Chi. I don't think I've seen Shang-Chi since we started recording. He would come in handy here, but if we don't see him, we don't see him. It's okay. We're going to change the Gamma Lab location. Uh, ooh, okay. Um, so the Professor X comes down. They We're only going to be able to play two more. I, we could play three more cards. They do win Limbo very, very heavily. They could have a Destroyer, actually. Ooh, interesting. Maybe we should have played Armor in the right lane. This could be a Destroyer list. And if they play Destroyer this turn, they can actually play something into the Space Throne on the last turn of the game. All right, we're still going to skip here um, and see what they end up playing. They do have the Destroyer, so they clear the Green Goblin out of that far right lane. So if we had played our Armor over there, that would have been much, much better for us. But I didn't think uh, our Destroyer is so infrequently ran now that i didn't even think about a potential <laughs> i didn't even think about a potential play there do we think they play more than six power into that location so when thinking of a destroyer deck list or a destroyer spectrum deck list actually this just looks like straight up destroyer right they shouldn't have anything other than like other than like a warpath that is more than six power 
and they snapped on us. I think we're fine. I think the six power demon in the space throne will win. And then the 30 power in Mojo World should be enough to surprise it away from them. Even if they have a spectrum here, it's going to buff this up by, by a handful. But I think we still outpace and outpower them uh, with the extra 30 power we're going to throw into that left lane. So the spectrum in the right lane is interesting. We do win that lane. Um, they should have done Ant-Man first. Is this a... If we, if we win by less than two, okay, no, we don't. We won it either way. And so we do get the four cube lockdown against the Spectrum Destroyer decklist. That one is a Space Throne game. But we're going to showcase it because um, we are four cubes away from infinite. I, <laughs> this, this deck has been popping off whether Space Throne is here or not. Um, it, this has been a phenomenal run. All right, next up we have Kate Sith MS. Uh, I'm guessing Marvel Snap. Uh, we do have our Sunspot in our opening hand. We have armor, so we're going to be able to play two Sunspots, two armors. If we get a She-Hulk, we can always skip on turn uh, five or six uh, because we do have our magic to be able to extend the game even further. Um, so I think we're going to do, right off the bat, we're going to do our armor to protect our one Sunspot, and then we can do both of them on turn, th on turn three to get a second sunspot down on the board. And okay, so they played armor into Shuri's lab. Interesting. That must mean that they're running some kind of like Shuri or really powerhouse deck. Okay. Hmm. So this is no longer phenomenal. <laughs> I don't I don't even know the best way to do this. Uh, we're going to play uh, okay, so they pull oh, they pull our armor out of the cloning vats with their Polaris, which does get double powered. If they have a way to destroy it, they have their window here. Uh, we do have a, a third sunspot that we can play onto the board. We now have our Infinite, which is going to be really, really big. We can do 40 power into Shuri's lab um, on that last turn, which I think could be enough to be the difference, um, depending on what they're running. So they have the armor, the players. I'm wondering if they're running some kind of junk deck. I almost want to stack the third sunspot into the cloning vats just in case we don't get something like a she-hulk but i also think we need some extra power in shuri's lab okay so the titania and then the zero so they are going to clog and block the rest of our cloning vats lane but i think that should be okay um because the next card they play will bounce it back actually no we bounced it back right away so if they play another card it will bounce it onto our side but then it becomes kind of difficult since it's not forced to make sure that it stays where it needs to be um, we could extend the game with magic, but I think what we're going to do instead, and actually that gives us what one extra energy to absorb. We could potentially pull into our She-Hulk. So it does look like they're running like a Shuri deck, but they haven't ran Shuri yet. So I am going to skip here. We're going to keep up with the infinite play line. We're going to let our sunspots absorb some energy. Hope that they don't play their Shuri or really their, their large, large cards into Shuri's lab this turn. Um, we could have shifted it, but I think that puts us at too much of a disadvantage. So let's see if we can pull this one out. If we had our She-Hulk in our hand, we probably would have extended the game. Ooh, the Red Skull is massive. If they do an arrow, then they pull us over into the left lane. We win that lane. They win Shuri's Lab by quite a bit. If they do a Taskmaster, Taskmaster is going to copy the 30 power. It would end up being 38 in that left lane. We would have 51 here, but they're going to beat us by more than we beat them. And so we are going to go ahead and take a tactical retreat. There's just too many things against us. If we had a way to maybe push into Sanctum Sanctorum, then we could have, had we had our She-Hulk, maybe we could have tried to uh, to hold our own. Or if we could have played Shang-Chi, we could have went that route instead. But we are going to take our tactical retreat. It is, it is only for one. So they didn't snap preemptively into it to kind of increase our buy-in would be probably the only thing I would have done differently. But unfortunately, that does knock us down by one. We are now three away from infinite. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have top G. The first location is the icebox. It hits our carnage, which makes it a little bit harder to use, but that is more of a like backup, backup, backup contingency. We don't necessarily need it for anything, um, but it's always nice whenever they send us like a green goblin or a hobgoblin. And if we're able to clean it up, we get a phenomenal amount of value from the carnage. Or if we get locations like Shadowlands or, um, or Raptor Valley, we get a lot of use out of it as well. So the last location is the Quantum Tunnel. We still have both of our really big resources in our deck. We also have some not so big resources. I'm going to use the Green Goblin into the Icebox. We want to try to clog that as much as possible. Since it does have the armor, they're not going to be able to clean it up. Even if they're running something like a Destroyer deck, 
or something big. So it does look like they may be lucky and they may be running a Lockjaw rotation deck with the Quantum Tunnel showing up. Wow. So it is the Battle of the Hulks in the middle location. What are the chances that that happens? I'm, I always wonder if there's some kind of like element that tweaks those those probabilities. But oh well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and play the Sunspot to the left. We're going to cycle our Carnage. If we draw into Infinite, fantastic. If not, then we'll continue on the drawing board. We do have our Moon Girl, so if we draw into our She-Hulk on this next turn, then we can actually skip, we can actually Moon Girl double down and then do the, oh wow. So we do get the Infinite in the Quantum Tunnel. Huge flip for us. We have the Magic, which can actually change this location. We can't use Moon Girl. But we can magic, we can skip, let Sunspot absorb some extra energy. We have a massive lead in Quantum Tunnel. We're going to be able to change this flooded location. We have a couple of extra turns to draw into our Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi is hiding at the very bottom of our list. I am starting to think that maybe he's not in our deck and that it's just the tracker is just lying to us. We are going to go ahead and use the magic, uh, change the flooded location. I assume that they push some power there. We do snap because we just have a lot of tempo. We have a lot of good things going our way. So the Thor is going to be great. That's going to become a, at least a 10 power card. Um, but I think between the Quantum Tunnel, the massive amounts of power that we have there and locking oh, the Green Goblin to return fire in the icebox is pretty big. Uh, so then the Ant-Man comes down. So they have a pretty big shot and a pretty big power push into the icebox lane. Let's go ahead and skip here. As long as they don't have another way to change a the location, then I think we can sneak out maybe the icebox lane. And then as long as they don't have their Shang-Chi. If we can draw into our Shang-Chi, we should be able to easily swing the middle location as well. We could do She-Hulk and Shang-Chi, which would give us a, a, a phenomenal value. But he is hanging out at the very, <laughs> the very bottom of our deck. Please, Mr. Shang, we need you. Do they run a Scarlet Witch as well? Do they run Storm and Scarlet Witch here? I mean, if so, depending on what they play, we have a chance to... Okay, so the Professor X lock mid is big. Oh, do they have a Shang-Chi of their own? We don't draw into our Shang-Chi, which is awful. Can they beat 20 power? They have the Professor X locked down. Do they have a Shang-Chi? Is what I'm curious about. We're going to play our She-Hulk. We're going to let Sunspot absorb some additional energy. And what we're hoping is that the 20 power Infinite is enough. The reason I'm not going to cycle anything is because we have a 50-50 shot of cycling into Carnage. And that would dest destroy our Infinite. And we do not want that uh, at all. So it all comes down to do they have a Shang-Chi? Um, I think an arrow play would be fine uh, because we're going to absorb some extra energy in the left lane. The arrow play into the cycle. Uh, so I guess we're going to test that theory really, really quickly here. They cycle into their Spider-Man. We gain an additional seven power in the left lane. So I think we're going to steal the uh, the eight cubes here, even though they had a really good lock in limbo. We got very, very fortunate that our Sunspot was able to absorb the additional energy and that we had the free She-Hulk coming down. And so with that one, we did climb to infinite with this list while trying to get a few games that didn't showcase the space throne. We just continued to go on a winning spree. And so this is our infinite list. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. And as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.